Okay, we're back with Ghost Pia, episode 3. The day we found a workplace to work at. Reasonable name. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a blast. Oh no, a blast. That's the, the Suicide Squad stuff. Konichiwa, amigos. I'm pretty sure those were the first words she shouts upon running into my room. By she, I mean Yoru, and by I, I mean me. For a long, long, long time, so long that nobody even knows how long, this town has had exactly 1,024 ghosts. And now we have a newcomer, Yoru, who's wandering around my room and looking at things curiously. That's a pretty neat artwork. She keeps saying things like that. She seems interested in just about everything. Is that thing always here? And is it even an artwork in the first place? Well, whatever. My ghost memory has never been reliable anyways. If I'm a ghost now, does that mean I was once alive? Ghosts were alive at one point, right? I mean, that's what being dead implies, doesn't it? Or are we born as ghosts, stuck here forever? But for what purpose? I wake up to the sound of chaotic snoring that sounds like a tank engine after someone tossed a sugar cube into the gas tank. Actually, I don't think I slept enough to say I woke up. You can't wake up if you were never asleep. In the same way, you can't become a ghost if you don't die. It's been like this the whole time, even though it's almost morning. As a result, I'm tired all the time lately. Just a little bit earlier, I could sleep as much as I wanted whenever I got sleepy, so this change is taking a toll. Yoru isn't a bad person, or a ghost in my opinion, she, probably, treats me with warm love or something like that. But it's a little suffocating for me. It's a little lonely to be completely isolated. Sometimes I want to see friends. But I feel more relaxed when I'm frozen in the cold dark void. That's just my nature. This current situation is clearly uncomfortable for me, but I don't think I can get, get Yoru to understand my plight. It's way too warm in my bed right now. There's a girl sleeping next to me, taking in such deep breaths. My chest is in pain. But why? Let's try going to sleep again. I close my eyes. I think back to when we fled town, and that 30-second birthday party, and the present. The problem is what happened afterward. When we woke up at the garbage dump, this is what Yoru said. So, uh, where do I stay? My place is no good. It's dirty, small, and cold. You should stay in a more homey home, like Bossy's. Huh? That won't work. My home doubles as my workplace. You've got empty rooms, though, don't you? Just because they're empty doesn't mean I don't need them. You piece of shit. Ow, damn it. Oh, stop. Pacifica stomps on Anya's face. Yoru looks on curiously for a while before she turns around to look at me. <laughs> looks like I'm in a pickle, huh? She says just that. Her eyes pierce right through me. That's when I say something all too naturally, almost by reflex, and as if I had prepared a script beforehand. <laughs> Why don't you stay at my place? Temporarily, I mean. Why did I say something like that? Even Anya and Pacifica both seem surprised by my proactive suggestion. I don't even know what I meant when I said temporarily, I mean. Anya, Pacifica, and I are probably all thinking the same thing. What does temporarily even mean? I can't look it up in the dictionary because there isn't one in this room. Besides, I've finally gotten sleepy. Temporarily means for a limited time. So, in other words, once that time comes to pass, everything goes back to how it was. But how do I get that time to pass? I don't know. I'll discuss this with the others. I mutter that before I finally manage to start falling asleep. Not a very deep sleep, but it's still something you could call sleep. Sorry. But right before I fall asleep, I feel like I see and hear something like that. 
I'm not entirely sure, but this is what dreams are like, right? Episode three. Don't mind me, just gonna crack into a LaCroix sparkling. I wonder what the, um, the blowback is going to be to this little rampage we did in the last episode. Everybody that that happened to is back, so, you know, we'll see what happens there. <sighs> I kind of figured. That's too bad. In a corner of the plaza at the center of town, Anya kicks some snow on the side of the street, sending slivers of ice scattering as she says that. I called the girls here, seeking advice. It's just Anya now, but Pacifica should be here eventually, too. Yeah, so what do you think I should do? I blankly watch as Anya plays with the snow as I ask for her opinion. She looks up and answers. I figured that'd be the case, but personally, I... I don't know. What do you think, Teach? Hey, hold it right there. Whoa, you spooked me. I was trying to be sneaky. And why are you calling me Teach now? Nothing wrong with calling the Teach Teach, right, Sayako? Huh? Teach? So what do you need to discuss? Is that it? No, wait. Let's take this somewhere warmer. Good idea. How about over there? Sure. Saves us the trouble of walking, since it's close. After a short delay, I follow their gazes to find some sort of establishment. A cafe, I guess. Ugh. A cafe. When I mull over the word in my head, I suddenly feel my stomach sink. On the other side of the lit window, countless shadows of ghosts. Is that redundant? Make a commotion, signaling to me just how busy it is inside the cafe we're about to visit. A death sentence. Don't worry, it's mostly just people like us inside. People who aren't all too interested in their surroundings. It's also cheap, and they don't complain if you stay too long. You get what you pay for with the coffee, though. A cheap flavor you just can't get at home. Pacifica urges me on, saying, let's go. Well, sure, it'd be rude to call someone for help, only to make them stand and talk out in the cold. We can't talk in my room, since yours is probably still in there, and it'd be shameless to ask to talk in Pacifica's house. Plus, I do think it's an experience I should give them a chance to, so I can't find a valid reason to refuse. The sound of chatter and the cafe's background music get closer and closer. Though in reality, I'm the one getting closer to the sounds. Calm down, it's just a cafe. You've been in restaurants and shops and stuff before, right? Same thing. Pacifica and Anya rush into the noisy establishment. Ow, ow. The moment I pass the threshold, the clattering stops, and all the ghosts fall silent. Let's leave. I tug onto Pacifica's coat and manage to let out that whimper. I can't do it, after all. Pacifica and Anya might be fine citizens, but I'm a burglar who raided the church. If they're seen here with me, it could cause them trouble. Oh, why? Sorry, could you move that chair for me? Thanks. Oh, yes, that's good. Thank you. Pacifica pushes her way through the crowd of ghosts. Anya follows behind. I follow, too, reluctantly. We all head the way to the only empty table, a round table deep in the back by the bathroom. We sit down. Three normal coffees, please. <laughs> Coming right up. At the sound of Pacifica's voice, the chatter resumes. The difference is shocking, but it also relaxes me a little. I'm sure everyone's lost interest in us. I suppose we're not that interesting after all. I still can't let my guard down, though. Sorry for the wait. Here it comes. Oh well, if it isn't Anya from the repair workshop, it's been 9,999 years, hasn't it, my lad? <laughs> I'll murder you. 
Long time no see, Mr. Patel. How's business? I've been working from home a lot lately, so I haven't been able to patronize your establishment. It's fine. It's like we'd like to say, but profit margins are thin with just coffee. Can I interest you in some sweets? That sounds good. Get something we can all share. I appreciate it. And last but not least, it's been a while since I've last seen you too, miss. I guess these two must be regulars here. But was I a regular too at some point? Hello. For now, I bow my head. I guess that was satisfactory for him since he turns around and skillfully weaves his way through the crowd of ghosts. Okay, I suppose we've settled in. So what did you want to talk about? Oh, should I get you up to speed? No, it's fine. I want to hear it from Sayako directly. Pacifica gracefully sips her coffee in a dignified manner. She then signals with her eyes for me to talk. <laughs> she does kind of act like a teacher. And the smell of cheap coffee does make you think of a teacher's lounge. It really makes me think about where I came from. I'm sure if I were alone, I'd be thinking about it all the way until morning. But right now, there's more pressing matters. You just don't vibe with her. Sayako, eventually you'll stop coming home, and your family will collapse. Your children will stay off the righteous path. First they'll get addicted to drugs, and next thing you know they're robbing trains. This isn't a joke, okay? They're taking this seriously, I think. They're just joking around to relieve some of the tension. That was a really cool effect, by the way. Hmm, so you two are living together, huh? That'd kill me. I agree. I'd say you seem more relaxed when you're by yourself. Are all ninjas lone wolves, or just you? How could she know, stupid? Ninjas even keep their personalities secret. That's what makes them cool, you know? You make a fine point, Anya from the repair workshop, my lad. Um... Oh, sorry, right. Why don't we take turns housing Yoru in our homes? I see, that might... No, that won't work. If it were me, I'd make it feel... No, no, that won't work. If it were me, it'd make me feel like I was being rented out on an installment plan. An installment plan? You've got a point. It would be like telling someone they're a liability. Anya nods in agreement. I suppose she's got a point. I feel a little ashamed of myself. It's like in the back of my head I'm hoping someone will take Yoru off my hands. I'd hate it if I were the one being treated like someone else's oversized trash. Okay, let's break down the problem. Little Anya here, take some notes. Hi, ma'am. Pacifica takes a memo pad out of her pocket. You have a pen? Yep. Anya pulls out a pen, seemingly out of thin air. But stop calling me Lil Anya. Rap name. So first things first. Living together isn't working out for Sayako. Okay, Sayako loves living alone. And Yoru doesn't have a place to call her own. Let's see, uh, Yoru has no home. These two issues are intertwined, but they're actually separate matters, aren't they? But if you solve one of them, the other will naturally disappear. Oh? I can't help but let out a voice of awe at the brilliance of her logic. I'm pretty sure I'm no good at this sort of logical thinking at all. It'd be nice if we could find an immediate solution, but that sounds hard. Let's approach the problem by tackling both issues at the same time. We've got no choice but to find a home from Yoru. Let's approach the problem by tackling both issues at the same time. We've got no choice but to find a home for Yoru. I'll look around and see if there's any good places. Thank you, I'm always relying on your help. It's okay. Now, about the other issue. You mean Sayako loves living alone? It's hard to deal with problems concerning someone's personal values, isn't it? That's not necessarily true. Say, Mr. Patel, what are you like when you're done with work? Well, when I'm done with work, I can stop making this dreamy customer service smile without an issue, you see. And once I get home, I sleep. 
nothing else. I don't even say a word. Oh, my. Yeah, some jerks tell me to get a hobby. But when you're up for long hours thinking about things, you start to feel real crummy. I crawl inside my inner self. I converse with my inner self. Uh, thanks for your thoughts. That's quite enough, actually. No, please let me continue. When I close my eyes, there's a big, pitch black wall. I hear a voice calling for me, searching for me, but criticizing me. So I don't answer. No, I can't answer. As I said earlier, I don't even say a word. Hey, uh, where's he going with this? I bear with it. I bear with it as I pray that I don't go mad. I keep praying until the sweet repose of sleep finally claims me. Beats me. Before work today, I sat in my car and cried. <laughs> Before work today, I sat in my car and cried at the wheel for just three minutes. You girls should give it a try. Oh, and I'd really appreciate it if you'd realize that I'm up late. <laughs> oh my god. Before work today, I sat in my car and cried at the wheel for just three minutes. You girls should give it a try. Oh, and I'd really appreciate it if you'd realize that if I'm late opening up on any given day, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I see. I'll give it a try. Please do. Anyway, here's an assortment of cookies for you. Enjoy yourselves. A little while after Mr. Patel leaves, it takes us a few moments of silence until we can ignore what just happened and move on. He needs medical help, preferably from someone patient and courteous. That enjoy yourselves almost sounded like a challenge. What were we talking about again? Uh, work. We were talking about crying on the toilet to feel better, weren't we? No, look, Sayako, he might be a bit of a special case, but typically, most jobs aren't that bad. In fact, there's nothing better than to find a job that's perfect for you. Huh, you think so? When you come home after work a little tired, it changes your mood. And by earning money, you're likely to open up more opportunities. But can I just casually start working after all the chaos that I cause? Nobody will try to kill me or anything? You just gotta kill them first. 